Uh, number four, uh, constant comparative, right? The idea of constant, E-O-N-S-T-A-N-T. -E the idea is constant comparative. Oh, and I shouldn't put it four. It's four, but it's four over here. Constant comparative. Um, constant comparative is a method of data analysis where the data is compared and contrasted against categories, right? So it's uh, an approach within grounded theory, sort of like a, a, a subordinate approach. Um, a method of data analysis where the data that I'm comparing is contrasted against categories. And I'll describe this uh, in a bit. So I'll have a category here and a category here. We know that categories are, and I'll write it in category. We know that categories are composed of concepts, right? So they're substantiated by concepts. And we'll see what concepts are themselves are uh, um, derivative of. But I look at the category, I recognize that these categories are substantiated by concepts, and then what I do in uh, a constant comparative is that I'm comparing these categories, right? Because both of the, cat not just both, I mean, there'll be, I have to sneeze, I think. Most of the categories, if not all of the categories within your um, grounded theory, your final theory that you're, that you're um, going to propose, um, are going to have to create what's known as this nexus, right? A theoretical nexus. Right? You're going to want to create a web of interconnection between different categories. So, for example, and this is just, you know, extremely sort of general and terse, um, if I am talking of, uh, let's say, childhood obesity, right, childhood obesity as a very broad category, I might be able to compare and contrast uh, those ideas of childhood obesity against many similar subordinate concepts, right? So um, uh, um, eating as a form of stress, uh, eating as a form of anxiety, um, eating because of parental neglect, eating because of parental overindulgence and what have you, what have you. All of these ideas, all the ideas that I just said, all of these sort of very general categor categorical headings have subordinate concepts behind it that substantiate it. But all of those general categories are interlinked. They create this nexus which, which is going to um, validate or substantiate the broader research project, the broader research project being childhood obesity. Right, so um, if you find yourself in and out of a clinic, if you find yourself in and out of a women's shelter, if you find yourself in and out of wherever it is that you're collecting your data in order to create this grounded theory, what you're going to recognize is that these categories are eventually going to interconnect to, to, to strengthen, if you will. Think of like Kevlar, right? Um, the categories um, as very dense units, conceptual units. And I, I like the way that sounds, right? The, the, they are really dense conceptual units because they're sort of like a consolidation of concepts, um, are themselves interconnected. And this is the process of constant comparative, right? The constant comparative is a method in which you strengthen the overall theoretical approach by comparing and contrasting um, categories. Those categories that fit well together um, and sort of bond together to substantiate the, the, the bigger research project, well, you keep those categories. Those categories that are less relative, that fail to um, substantiate or strengthen the research project, you discard those. Okay, so that's the idea of con constant comparative. And I'm going to erase this now and start with, uh, with 5 uh, and continue through 8. Okay, uh, number 5. This is uh, important. I'll, uh, I'll go through and I'm going to do, uh, I think I go through, yeah, I go through and I'll, I'll do a more, a more elaborate discussion on coding, what coding is. I'm not going to get into too much detail because I don't want to spend too much information on coding. And also Gibbs's account is, I think Gibbs has an entire video on just coding, like open coding, uh, uh, open coding, uh, axial coding. So I'll, I'll send you the link. In, in, in here to watch. Um, and also, as I said, um, this is a supplement. So, you know, refer to what Strauss and Corbin say, refer to what Creswell says. 
uh, go watch Gibbs's video. I'm just going to give you a very sort of general account of what coding is. I can do, you know, a three-hour video on just coding in grounded theory, but I'm not. Um, so first, number five is open coding. And that's the concept, right? It's called open coding. Um, coding the data for major categories. What is open coding? It's, it's coding the data for major categories. Um, what I sort of identify as the application of the label. Right? So it is coding So it's coding the data for major categories. It's the application of a label. When we're talking about open coding, it's precisely that, right? It's the idea of generally open, opening the data, looking at the data holistically in its entirety. And again, the way that we go about creating categories first, the first step, is that we look for similar concepts. Then we group those similar concepts together and create a category based on that concept. This concept then, is a representation of those subordinate category, uh, subordinate concepts. This category is a representation for the subordinate concepts. And we then label that category. Um, and the label that we give the category is an act of open coding. The example that, um, that I think it was Strauss and Corbin gave is one of um, color. So if I say um, the category is color, you can see that ca the, the category color as a category is a much more general concept for all the different things that will constitute color. Um, so the appropriation of the label color as a category is an act of open coding. What you do is you identify, first step is you identify the concepts, then you group similar concepts, then you um, openly code those concepts under a label, and that is the act of, of uh, open coding. So it's, it's really not that difficult. Um, the difficult part is selecting the phrases or the terms for coding. There's a whole discourse that Strauss and Corbin go into on appropriate m methods of coding. I, I think the example was, uh, I forget, it was something like they were watching somebody cook a meal in a kitchen or something. I forget what it was. But, you know, and the concepts of watching and all this other stuff gets into it. I'm not going to go into all of that discourse now. Um, but generally speaking, the idea of uh, open coding results from watching many other things, um, but applying a general label to the consolidated, consolidated group of concepts. So that's number five. Again, um, far for a more detailed discussion um, on the internet. Uh, uh, again, watch Gibson's video. He does a good account. Um, okay, we have axial coding. And axial coding is the identification of, quote, connections between categories, right? Connections between categories. And this is contingent on both what's known as properties and dimensions. I'll talk about the distinction of um, properties and dimensions in a second. Um, I erased it. So remember, we have a category here. We have a category here, right? Um, the creation of a category requires an act of open coding. Right, to be able to label or create this category, discover rather, to be able to discover this category is a consequence of open coding. To be able to compare and contrast categories is a consequence of axial coding. Obviously, axial coding follows from open coding. Right? Um, you can't actually code until you've open code. Right? You open code, create your category groups. After you've created the categories, then you can do a comparative and contrastive account of the categories, which is a product of axial coding. So you always axial code after you open code. It would be impossible to axial code before open coding because you need the category to be there. So identification of a category, the category's color, identification of the category, the category might be something else, then, which is, which are both instances of open coding, then axial code, uh, I compare and contrast the, uh, the categories.